this is this is Joe. Joe, this is Joe right here. This morning I'm starting my day shooting uh, a show called Sneaker Shopping with Complex. It's on their YouTube channel. I'll link it below. But basically, we've been in here talking, yes. talking sneakers. Good insight. It, it, good insight on sneakers for like the last hour. And I accidentally bought a bunch of pair of sneakers. Three great pickups. Three great ones. You know what my wife says? She says, don't buy any more fucking sneakers. Well, she's not gonna be happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second to last shot. Thank you. So, Casey, thanks so much for coming through. Left with three awesome pickups. All right, I gotta, I gotta go to work. I really want to show you the shoes that I got, but the guys, they said that I should keep it kind of as a teaser, so maybe you'll go watch their show. Again, I'll link it below. I think their show comes out in a couple weeks or something, but uh, check out the weather. It looks perfect. And what that means is today, I can finally review the new drone, the Skydio R1. This is that one I talked about in my video from a couple days ago. It's supposed to be like crash. I gotta get more lights, more lights, where it's supposed to be uncrashable and made by these MIT grads and stuff. Okay, this is the unboxing. So just looking at the hardware, looking at the size of this thing, it's big. It doesn't break down in any way. And if you compare it to a, a Mavic, which folds, it's a, a, the footprint's a little bit bigger. Compared to a Phantom 4, the footprint's about the same size. Obviously, it's a lot thinner than the Phantom 4 because it doesn't have those feet. The spark is just tiny compared to this thing. And uh, compared to the Mavic Air, you know, it's 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 substantially larger. This is made out of aluminum and carbon fiber. This is not plastic. No, ah, that hurt. The magic of this thing, the selling point of this thing, the reason why it's so revolutionary is the fact that it has 13 cameras on it. It's a, it's a lot of sensors. And it's supposed to have the best AI, the best artificial intelligence of any drone ever made, ever. It's supposed to fly with total autonomy. It's supposed to be able to read the environment around it and never crash into anything. It says it has a 256 core processor powering the whole thing. Pretty compelling sales pitch. Uh, let's, uh, let's give it a try. It is a truly majestic afternoon here in downtown Manhattan. This is the location where I'm gonna be testing this drone. I picked this location because it is the busiest uh, with stuff overhanging and flying through things. I can honestly say that even though I am maybe the greatest, I'm not the greatest, even though I'm a perfectly average drone pilot, there's no way I could navigate through this area with any of my DJI drones. You've got trees on the right, trees on the left. They overhang, so there's no path through here. And then even here, trees overhead, building to the right, trees to the left. Again, there's no way I could get a drone through here. We're talking about six feet, eight feet on either side, trees above us completely. There's no way you could navigate this with a drone. I would go as far as to say, this would be impossible to fly. Even the best pilot would really struggle I don't see how anybody could fly a regular drone through here, and this is where the maiden test is gonna be for the R1. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna take the drone off from here. I'm gonna follow the drone filming with this camera to give you a perspective on what it looks like when this is flying through the air. Lance here is gonna ride this bicycle, and the drone's gonna try to follow Lance, not follow me. All right, so Lance, aim for the most busy possible area and see if this thing can follow you. Wow! Go between the trees! Very impressive. 
impressive, very impressive. Watch this. There he goes. And there it goes. I've in my life never seen anything perform the way this thing has performed. Weaving through those trees, it's, it's, the way it flies looks almost like it has a brain of its own, like it's its own human. You know those Boston Dynamic videos where they've got like the robot dog that can open a door and it scares the shit out of you? That's what this flies like. If I were to compare this to DJI's autonomous features, it'd be a little bit like comparing like a Ford Model T to a, a Lamborghini. Like this isn't a small step up in tracking and following technology. This is a quantum leap. You don't want robots doing what this robot can do. All right, let's talk about the not so great. So this thing does one thing that's the follow feature better than anything else in the market by a huge margin. But that's the only thing it does better than every other competing consumer marketed drone on the market. First of all, the size and form factor. You know, I could really see myself using this when I go snowboarding. I could see myself using this maybe when I'm skateboarding, but it doesn't fit in my backpack. And I had it strapped to the outside of my backpack, but it's wider than my backpack and it kept getting caught on things. This is just, a ginormous drone considering all it does is follow you. Speaking of all it does is follow you, it also lacks sort of the cinematic capabilities of, uh, of any of the DJI drones that have a controller with them. Those big, sweeping, beautiful views, that's not what this is designed for. You're controlling this with a cell phone, which means its range is a couple hundred feet instead of a couple thousand feet. The touch controls are imprecise with this because again, you're on a phone, so there's imprecise there with any of the competing drones that use a phone. And then there's the image itself. Uh, this thing takes super crispy, yummy 4K footage that has great color reproduction, but it's one wide angle image that sort of looks like, it kind of looks like I handed my three-year-old daughter a camera and said, try to keep me in frame. It's always jerky and moving around trying to keep you in frame. And then the last major beef I have with this uh, is the price. It's $2,500. For that same 2,500 bucks, you could buy yourself a, a Phantom 4 Pro and a Mavic Air and have money left over to eat at McDonald's every day for lunch for a month. Nice. That's a lot of money to spend for a drone that really has one feature. Now when I emailed the company asking them about what I saw as, as this product's shortcomings, they had a good response. They said, think of this like the first generation Tesla. It's really made to show off what the technology is capable of. That's why it's so expensive. And, and, and it leaves me very excited for the future. Especially excited when I think of maybe DJI buys the technology behind this thing and they build the hardware, these guys build the software. Imagine these two having a little drone baby that can do what this thing does, but can also do what this thing does, but is the size of this thing. That is like a dream. That is like a fan drone fantasy. So in conclusion, I want to compliment the Skydio team on, on building this little bastard. The technology is very exciting. I can't wait to see where you take this thing next. Uh, congrats on launch. I will be playing with this thing. <laughs> Come on. Oh!